How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at Dark Glasses. This is from 2022 and was put out on Shudder. This was directed by horror legend Dario Argento. Dario Argento, you guys may know him for Deep Red or Suspiria. My personal favorite is Phenomenon. He's made a lot of really good classic Italian giallo movies. And this is his first film in about 10 years. This is 2022. And in 2012, we had Argento's Dracula 3D, which I'll cover in another video probably. Uh, needless to say, amongst Argento fans, that film is kind of infamous. And a lot of people, you know, wondering what it would look like when Dario Argento returned. And now we have that answer. But before we get into that, a few more credits. This movie stars Elena Pastorelli, Ashia Argento, Dario Argento's daughter, we all knew she'd be in here, and Andrea Gerperli. Uh, one more thing I want to mention. The script was written by Dario Argento himself and Franco Farini in 2002. Yeah, this movie was supposed to be made 20 years ago, but the studio that was going to make it went under and the script sat on a shelf for 10 years. And yeah, I guess that's, you know, there were a few red flags and it had me cautiously optimistic going into this film. Um, Dario Argento not making a film in 10 years, the script sitting on the shelf for 20 years, but also the movie going to Shudder and Shudder didn't give it a super wide DVD release, um, didn't make it into the Walmart circuit, I just happened to stumble across this DVD looking through my movie shop and of course when I saw it was Argento I picked it up really quick but I just saw this I'm like what is this a they live knockoff but no I, I saw Argento I'm like whoa he made a new movie I I haven't heard much about this and the DVD doesn't even have an English dub so it had stayed kind of on the down low 20 years 10 years no dub you know, when I saw this, when I did research before I watched it, yeah, I was kind of put in a, eh, I don't know if this will be good space. But when I watched it, I, I, I saw it and I realized it's okay. Like, I don't want to, to harp on it too much. It's definitely not perfect. It's not a return to form of Dario Argento from 40 years ago but maybe a return to form for Dario Argento from 20 years ago, which, not that bad. Um, there were things that I really did like, you know. This is very much a modern giallo. We get the classic giallo killer with his black gloves, uh, roaming the streets at night, stalking people. Cool to see the giallo-style killer back. And I do like the wacky gang of characters that we have here. Our main character is a blind prostitute and she's teamed up with a young Asian boy and her German Shepherd. That's a fun little unexpected trio of characters there and them going around and solving a mystery, that's pretty cool. But I guess I should say on the cons, the, the plot is strangely straightforward. You know, old school giallo plots, they could kind of get rambly and hard to follow. But like with this one, when the killer's revealed, you're like, cool, it's that guy. Whatever. And it's pretty much just getting into trouble. Is the killer going to find me? Big chase sequence. Pretty clean and standard three-act structure. A lot of people with Argento starting off being such a big, stylish director, that was one of the disappointments of his later career, is when the style started to fade and everything became not bad, but just kind of standard. And that sort of is a thing, you know, like you look at the cinematography for this movie, it's good cinematography, and the production values are good, but again, 
more in the lines of clean and standard and not stylistic. I mean, we know the Argento of the gels and the crazy, over-the-top, insane sequences. And there are some of those moments in here. There's a car crash that comes out of nowhere and is big and crazy. The characters are in the river when they randomly get attacked by water snakes. Very much like the rat scene in Inferno. And they, you do get some crazy moments, but because so much of the film is shot without that style or experimental feel, the crazy moments just kind of stick out like a sore thumb and don't really seem to be part of the film's charm and instead just come off as awkward. And I guess that is one thing I should mention. When it comes to what Giallo was and could we ever have it again, in Giallo, you had Italian movies disconnected from the resources of Hollywood, often with a lot less budget. And in turn, they were put in a, a, you know, a bit more of a desperate state. And through the fire often comes creativity and experimentality. Sometimes you get better films under limitations. And yeah, they didn't always make sense. Yeah, they were kind of cheesy, but when you had moments where films really experimented, really swung for the fences, you had fun, crazy, over-the-top gore and extreme sequences and just absolutely free, experimental insanity, it, it was really great. But nowadays, and I mean, lots of resources are good, the cameras can do so much more than they used to be able to do back in the day, and they're so much lighter. And I think it is one of those things that, you know, Argento having more of a name, you can put together more of a professional crew, but you kind of lose that raw indie experimentality, and it, it is missed. And I kind of wonder, Giallo films being so influential to American directors, how are we going to get another generation of just raw experimental films like that when, I mean, even AI nowadays can make decent stuff for you? So I am kind of wondering where the future goes with truly experimental filmmaking, but that's a conversation for another video. As I said, Dark Glasses... It's fine, it's just lacking so much of his stylistic flair. It isn't bad, but it's... I, I miss the old Argento, you know? But it's still... it's okay. And I guess without further ado, let's talk a little bit about the plot. I'm not gonna do any major spoilers, but that being said, I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and analyze a few things. So no major spoilers, but let's talk about primarily the setup for the film. Uh, we open up with a prostitute getting killed. Um, she gets strangled. A very giallo thing to do. I think the killer in this movie is actually called the cellist or something. I think I read that somewhere doing research. And that's a cool name for the killer, but they don't really play off of it in the name of the in the in the movie itself, you know. But he strangles this girl, and you do get a fair bit of blood and a decent effect, you know. It, it's fine, but the thing with the kill, I think, is the lack of setup intention. It just happens way too quick. She walks out and pretty quickly gets strangled. And I remember the old Argent. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but. The old Argento, you would have suspense, strange things would happen before the kill. She'd walk down the street and an intense goblin score would be playing for no reason. But here it just kind of jumps to the kill too quick, strangles her and you're done. And you know, I do wish there was more build-up intention here. But then we jump to our main character, another prostitute, and we get the opening, a solar eclipse. And or lunar eclipse, I can't remember which one, the moon in front of the sun. And she stares at it with her dark glasses on, which I don't know if that would be enough to keep your eyes safe, but whatever. Uh, she stares at the solar lunar eclipse, again, whatever, 
Uh, and I guess that's her origin for her dark glasses. Maybe there's a bit of a metaphor here. I mean, there was a an eclipse in uh, Inferno as well. But, uh, yeah, she has her dark glasses because of the eclipse. And it's an interesting opening sequence with everyone staring up at the sky and the audience not knowing right away what they're looking at. But then it doesn't play into the movie much later on. Anyway... We cut to later on at night, and the prostitute is with a client who takes things too far, and she has to pepper spray the client, punch him a few times, get out of there. And after she flees this place, she's attacked by the killer, but she gets away and she's driving in her car in this car chase sequence, when in her pursuit, she accidentally hits another car, big, crazy, over-the-top car crash. And as I kind of hinted at earlier, I like big, crazy, over-the-top car crash, but when you didn't really set up that you're a crazy movie, it does kind of come out of nowhere, and you're like, whoa, what a crash, whoa. Uh, but anyway, a few repercussions from the crash. One, she's blind now. She hit her head, and now she can't see. And she's going to have to learn to live again. And Ashi Argento is going be, to be the person who teaches her and helps her get rehabilitated. And is one of her few friends in the world. An additional uh, aftermath of the car wreck is the family that was in the other car that got all good and smushed. Uh, it was a mom, a dad, and a little boy. And they were from Hong Kong. The dad died instantly on the scene of this car wreck. The mom is in a coma, but it's not looking too good. But the kid is unharmed. So the main character goes to the kid, tries to make amends, and in turn the kid wants to stay with her. And you would think that if you're in an overcrowded orphanage and someone wanted to take you in, you could fill out the proper paperwork and give them a temporary house or something. I don't know how Italian adoption works, uh, but she just steals the kid. Well, to be fair, the kid runs away and she hides him from the police. So now you have your illegal orphan from the orphanage that you, uh, you stole. Illegal since you, you stole him. And throughout a large part of the middle of the movie, it is her worrying about maybe there's a killer out there and also hiding from the police as well and it's the three of them the girl the the young boy and the dog kinda you know <laughs> hoping they don't get killed yeah there's a killer after you maybe it's not so good to bring a child with you I don't know uh, but you do get moments and it is an interesting dynamic having where the main girl is blind and she's very new at it and the young kid can see but he's young and traumatized and them trying to do things together hey what is uh what is that vehicle is that a car is that the white van who's after me or maybe they get a gun and the girl's like you can't shoot a gun but i'm blind so just kind of try to direct me surprise surprise that doesn't work. But it is an interesting relationship. It is a very, you know, odd pairing of characters. I think Argento did a blind protagonist and a young a young girl in, what was it, Bird with the Crystal Plumage? Yeah, a little bit similar, but it's still, it's fun. And eventually, things will go down, and you get kind of a prolonged chase sequence towards the end of this movie, running around in the woods for part of it and it's it's fine you know like I said the character balance is interesting and we get a few good kills and a few fun moments but rather than being soaked all the way through they are kinda spaced out and the thing is the rest of the movie that isn't the insane Argento stuff is still a decent direct to streaming style movie I wouldn't say it's terrible. There is definitely some questionable character decisions that, uh, you know, it's like, hey, maybe you shouldn't do this. Maybe you shouldn't 
steal an orphan when a killer's after you, or maybe if you had worked harder, those random people over there wouldn't have died. And, you know, some questionable things with the killer as well. I mean, like I said, I won't spoil who it is, but when you find out who it is, you're like, wait a minute. So your motivation for killing people was this? And that technically didn't happen till after the first kill, so were you... What's... Yeah, and yeah, it's just like, okay, this guy's the killer. <laughs> Why not? And it does end a little... A little quickly like again I won't spoil what it is but the ending of this movie had been done by Argento before the big climatic uh, gag there but it had been done by Argento before in the middle of one of his other movies not at the end and to say that that was the big climatic scene a little underwhelming so overall I I don't want to rag on this movie too hard I watched it and enjoyed it. It was a good, pleasant afternoon, but it's not going to be one that I remember super hard or fondly. You know, I it's just a hey, halfway decent Argento, a return to form of early 2000s Argento. It, sadly, not early 80s Argento, but it's it's okay. Anyway, uh, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. How about my Shudder playlist? You guys can see me review the Creep Show TV show. I covered a lot of that. A lot of that. And I also talked about a bunch of other random Shudder movies. So this playlist should have some stuff in it as well. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Shudder playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.